That's the first day of September and this is an update on my frugal veggie garden and also my permaculture beginnings of my yard. I'm going to just run through some of the stuff in my yard quickly and try to give some helpful tips and hints where I can and hopefully you guys will enjoy the video. Okay, so this is my compost pile. It's a great way to reduce your waste on uh, food by recycling the materials into something that can help your plants grow, but after a while it starts to get pretty gross, like I have here. It's getting pretty rank, and uh, I'm going to turn it today. I'll skip all the hard work, but uh, I'm going to show you what I do to compost. Okay, so what I did was turn my compost pile a little bit by just sh shoveling it up and throwing all the compost into this wheelbarrow. And then I just mix it and stir it up, get it uh, nice and fluffy and not compacted. And uh, right here we have some, a lot of old vegetable scraps. A spoon my son threw in there but this is um all the fresh vegetable scraps from my kitchen we're just gonna throw it right here on top of the compost pile let's get all those nasty veggies out when I compost I usually just throw in uh just about anything edible other than like meat to not attract rodents and stuff like that but I pretty much just throw in anything that is biodegradable and any food scraps I throw paper in there cardboard cut it up into small little pieces so it'll degrade faster and then I throw it on top of the compost pile before throwing the old compost back on to help the microbes and the, the heat and the bacteria and the other organisms that live in compost. It helps it degrade faster by putting it in the middle instead of directly on the top. So I'm going to skip the hard part again and go ahead and throw the rest of the compost back onto the pile. Alright, so here's the new compost pile after being turned. You can tell it's a little bit more of a mound now helps it uh, get the new organic matter digested inside and uh, helps aerate this, the inside of the pile which is good. Now technically you don't have to even turn a pile, a compost pile. If you just want to let some food scraps sit out in your yard and it'll eventually decompose all on its own. It just will take longer time and you might have to deal with the smell and also become more of an eyesore also but I just usually turn my compost pile every two to three weeks and it seems to be a pretty good interval for turning the, the pile to help everything on the inside when fresh decompose by the time I turn the pile next time, it's already almost gone. There's a few remnants of eggshells and cardboard here and there, but sure enough, by next time, uh, it'll be gone and decomposed into a wonderful organic fertilizer for my garden. And that's the compost pile. Here's the kale that I planted earlier this spring. It, ever since I pulled up the cauliflower, it's been getting attacked by the same bugs that were attacking the cauliflower, so having to do some general picking of them and either throwing them in soapy water or just smashing them but uh, either method works effectively and uh, I'm hoping to keep this kale going into the fall and winter because kale is very cold hardy cold hardy from what I understand uh, we will see in the following months. So in this mess of bush beans which I have a plethora of new beans to harvest these things just keep producing. I was expecting to pull them up earlier, but they've been producing like crazy, so I'm glad I left them. But 
In this midst of the beans, there is a couple of basil plants that I have growing, just volunteers. They grew up all on their own, and uh, they make great additions to any um, culinary items you're making, especially Italian food. And uh, yeah, just the, the leaves are delicious, and I recommend growing basil for any reason at all. <laughs> It's a wonderful plant. Another volunteer I have in my garden, a vo uh, volunteer habanero plant. It's uh, I, p I grew habaneros last year and I suppose the seeds survived because this is the spot where I grew them, but you can see they are starting to develop fruit. I'm hoping that uh, the pods will ripen before the first frost gets here, but I doubt it, but we'll see. This is the only spinach I could get germinated for fall so far but uh, it's growing somewhat okay we'll see if it survives over here I got a few beets and in this general area which is being overtaken by a tomato plant that I need to prune I just threw a bunch of seeds out and uh, they're old seeds I didn't really have much use for them so I just kind of threw them in the garden. Most of them are beets, but you can see them all germinating here. I'm hoping that these will form uh, in time for the fall season, the first frost, to uh, hopefully allow me to have some fresh food in the fall and winter months. But as I said before, we'll see. These are the beans that I said supposedly needed to be fertilized earlier this year, but I may have put my foot in my mouth because these things are loaded with beans. You can see them everywhere all over the plants. There's some really mature ones down there. I don't know if you can see them. There's a bunch right here. I mean these plants just produce like crazy. There's some of the more original ones. I'm walking over here on my succession planting that I did about let's say a month after the first one. They're also doing pretty well, growing all the way to the top of the fence. Um, got beans all over them. And then over here, on this side of the fence, where were, there were my peas over here, but I planted another round of bush beans, hopefully finish up growing by the fall. And uh, they're growing great. And this is the area where I've added mulch, a la perma permaculture style or permaculture design never let the soil just be bare always having something covering the soil and seems to really have improved their growth rate just I don't I'm not sure if it's the cooler temperatures or the addition of organic material but it really seemed to help and I fully recommend mulching with just any material you can find in your yard if, if you can. I just use grass clippings for my lawn, but on some parts you can see where I've used over on the other side, I've used corn, corn husks and stalks. Uh, let me walk over there so you can see. A lot of the corn husks make excellent mulch. And uh, yeah, I fully recommend using mulch whenever possible because it just seems to enormously benefit the soil in more ways than one. And here's another one of my bush beans. You can see the flowers just starting to form. Here's the jalapeno plant from earlier this year. I've also used corn husks to mulch this plant. You can see that it has a variety of or not a variety but a multitude of jalapeno peppers on it they all started to bloom right after I applied the mulch so I don't know if it's a coincidence or if mulch just really has that much of a positive impact on plants but it just exploded after I added mulch um, so again another win for mulch and this jalapeno is pumping out some peppers uh, I got a couple more plants also that also have quite a few peppers on it. I'm sure you notice in the first 
part of the video, this marigold, which has completely overtaken the center of my square foot garden. I'm not too upset though, as you can see, it's full of beautiful flowers and it's providing lots of nectar and other insects for predatory insects to feast upon and just benign insects to, you know, get the nectar. Here's some kind of butterfly looking thing feasting on the nectar right at the moment. But I started these using a method called winter sowing which I am going to devote a whole post on it in the coming months and detail my experiences with it but it's a great way to start flowers and this year I'm going to attempt to start vegetable seeds with it as well so stay tuned for that and also more flowers these are asters they're supposedly native to my area they really they look kind of ragged right now but when they were first in bloom they're definitely um, supplying a lot of good food sources for local bugs and predatory insects and can't say for sure but all the plants next to my asters have been relatively pest free as, as you can see doesn't make great difference there's a worm right in the center of this kale they do add a level of beauty to the garden which wouldn't otherwise be there so I recommend growing them still um, Here's the remnants of the front yard garden. Um, the corn stalks are completely done now and they're just living out the last of their life before the frost comes, but I'm going to tear them down and use them as mulch in my backyard garden. And uh, I got a few pumpkins and a few squash. All in all, it was pretty successful experiment, although I didn't get too much out of it. I did get quite a few ripe tomatoes, a few squash, and a rather large pumpkin, at least for the first time growing pumpkins, I would say. So next year I'll definitely be sure to amend the soil up here with some kind of additional nutrients like compost. And other than that, I think the only other thing that I could have done better was um, space the plants a little farther apart so they can get a little more light each but next year I will take these lessons and apply it to that and see what happens. Alright so my Rio Grande tomato man this thing produced some wonderful tasting tomatoes and produced a lot of them you can still see that there's some ripening on the vine I'm just waiting for it to get the perfect ripeness before I pick it but the plant itself, you can tell it's not doing so well. I believe it got something known as late blight, but it's hard to be sure because there's a lot of tomato diseases. Um, but yeah, I got quite a few tomatoes out of this plant. Next year, I think the lesson learned is that I'll have to have at least four to five tomato plants to actually be self-sufficient in tomatoes during the season four to five at least although they do produce prolifically it still is only just one or two here and there so to have an abundance of them to make actual dishes we will have to have at least four to five plants that are producing at least four to five ripe tomatoes every time we pick them so but for this year I'd say still very good progress and this is actually the first year I've ever gotten ripe tomatoes off the vine so that in itself is an accomplishment to me but um, yeah next year I plan on growing more tomatoes to hopefully have an even more bountiful harvest. The last thing I want to show you is my blueberry plants I don't know if you remember earlier this season how big they were but they definitely have put on quite a bit of size just in this one season alone and I have to say once again that after applying mulch these things really took off it could have just been the, the hot weather or in, 
we haven't had too much rain this year, but yeah, applying the mulch, and they took off. So once again, another vote thumbs up for mulching. <laughs> Seems to really make a big difference. And these are my two smaller ones. They haven't put on as much growth, but they still have put on a good amount of new leafy areas. Now here's the pumpkin that I grew. I'm going to leave off the video with that, but I'd say for not fertilizing and not even this is the first attempt I've ever had at growing pumpkins. This is a pretty decent sized pumpkin. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for more updates. Um, the season's slowing down, but I still have lots of new ideas for the garden and for my blog topics, so just keep Stay tuned for more um, videos and articles on becoming self-sufficient in gardening and more uh, other topics as well. I've been on a gardening kick, but as the months get colder, I will start progressing into different topics again. Thanks for watching and come back again.